Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. I know uh, Friday night is valuable, and I know that uh, sometimes the last, the last place you want to be is the place you spend a lot of time at, and that your daughter spent a lot of time at. But we really appreciate you being here because we feel, as a result of being here, it's going to make a big difference in how this year will go and how we can ensure the success of your daughters and just make sure that this club season is, is going to be, you know, perhaps the most successful as far as, as, as learning a work ethic, as far as developing skills, and as far as parent support at home and from the coaches. And that's, that's where our ultimate goal is. Uh, tonight what we're going to talk a lot about is mindset. And as we get started with this, the first question I just want to ask you, just kind of to prepare you, is, is to think, you know, are you preparing the path for your child? or are you preparing your child for the path? And, and that's just a, a really great question from a lot of standpoints. Are you doing their work, or are you letting them and preparing them to do their own? And we want to help you walk you through and understand a little bit about what kind of mindset we will be teaching this year at Club B. So that way you can reinforce and help them at home. Because ultimately, we get them for maybe four, five, six hours a week, and you get them the rest of the time. So what you do is going to probably be a lot more valuable than what we can do. And obviously, you know, they listen, and it's nice. It takes a community. Trust me, I know that with my, with my children. But ultimately, what you do at home and how you reinforce it at home will make a big, big difference on what we do during the week. Okay? Um, next slide, please, sir. <laughs> so here we go. The power of words. And we've got to understand that a few words can make a big, big impact, positive or negative. So we're going to talk about a test that was done in New York. So 400 New York fifth graders were given a puzzle. Okay? And half of them, we were given the, the words, the, the phrase, you must be smart at this. Okay? The other half were told, you must have worked hard at this. This is after the, the test was taken, okay? And so half the group, they're encouraging them for their being smart. The other group, they were encouraging them for their hard work, okay? And as a result, they went back to the second puzzle and they asked them, you know, do you want a puzzle that is more difficult or do you want a puzzle that is easier? And what's, what's amazing from this is the result that happened is that the kids who were told that they were smart opted to choose an easier puzzle, okay? The kids who were told that they worked hard, 90% of them chose a harder puzzle, okay? So you had half the kids choose an easier one, and then you had, you know, in the, in the group that was encouraged for their hard work, 90% of them chose a harder puzzle. So that, that's something that, uh, that, that's pretty, pretty amazing. The third puzzle they went back was extremely, extremely, extremely hard, okay? And the kids who were encouraged for their, for being smart, they struggled with it. They felt that they were not, they felt they were not smart. They felt they were incredibly dumb. The kids who were, the kids who were, were encouraged for their hard work, not necessarily have better results in the test, but they had a better attitude about the test. They kept taking it, they kept trying, and they did not let that defeat them based on their, their results, okay? Okay, and so what they ultimately did is then they gave them the first test again. The results are astonishing. So the group that was told that they were smart, this is how they did, okay? The last test, they did 20% worse. The group that was told and encouraged that they worked hard did 30% better. Okay, so pretty amazing, right? So how simple are those phrases? You must be smart, you must be talented, you must be gifted as opposed to reinforcing work. You must have worked hard at this. You must have studied hard, so on and so forth. And the difference of that is 50%. That's it's pretty incredible when we think about it, okay? Moving on. We have two different mindsets. We have the fixed mindset, where we start off thinking ability is God-given. You're born with it or you're not, right? Okay, and let's, let's review some other, some other uh, mindsets here. 
setbacks label you as deficient. You either have talent or you don't, so on and so forth, okay? So as you can see that what we believe whatever we are is what we are, we can't change it. You're great, you're bad, so on and so forth, okay? When we get into the growth mindset, we believe that ability can be developed. And that is what we believe here at Club B. Ability can be developed. Doesn't matter where you are today, because we will help guide you to be better. We will help guide you to develop more ability. Okay? Setbacks are great learning opportunity. So as we said earlier in the parent meeting, we want them to come home frustrated sometimes. We want them to come home feeling like maybe it wasn't the best practice or, or maybe they didn't quite get something because a setback is a learning opportunity. They will learn more from not being able to do something than they will learn from being able to do something. Okay, and then ultimately, that building a talent, it's a process. It does not happen overnight. That you'll see that where we are today, where we are at the beginning of the season, ultimately, hopefully, is not where we are at the end of the season. We may start great and finish better. We may start slow and finish great. Whatever the case is, we want to make sure that it's a process, that it improves over time. And that's what we're striving for. That's what we're going to work extremely hard to do. Okay, we have to ask ourselves, what makes this guy different, Tim Tebow? I, if anybody has followed Tim Tebow's career or realized what happened in his, his year of his Heisman campaign, they lost a, a, big, a big game, Tim Tebow crying on, in his interview afterwards, and it was a big shock to the sports world. Here's this great big quarterback crying, and he made some promises, okay? And in his promises, he said that he would. It's just, it's just frustrating. I wanted to stay in our hearts and keep hurting um, because this will motivate me um, uh, personally and I think believe everybody else, the coaches and the rest of the players, um, to never let something like this um, happen again, um, especially when we feel we're better than the team. And, um, don't play up to our ability. And uh, I just want to say one thing um, to the fans and everybody in Gator Nation. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, extremely sorry. You know, we we're hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal. Southern Florida's never done here. But I promise you one thing. A lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season. You never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. You never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. Pretty incredible. Okay. Here's, here's a guy who's defined his career with hard work. It always hasn't worked out perfectly, especially in his pro career right now, but Tim Tebow will work harder than anybody else. And, and that's something that you can look at and respect. It's something you can look at and say, he accomplished his goals and he lived up to his promise, is that he worked harder and he did the things and he pushed his teammates at, you know, to a level where they needed to be. You know, Tim Tebow won a couple, he won his freshman year, and his, uh, I believe his junior year won national championships. He won a high school trophy, okay? Pretty remarkable. Okay, now here's what we have to understand. Here are the naturals in their field, okay? Wilma Rudolph. Does anybody know much about Wilma? How did she start her life? I'm sorry? Yeah, she, she couldn't walk. Yep. Yeah, she was in braces, I think, leg braces until she was 12. So she couldn't walk. Um, you know, said she'd never be able to do a lot of things. 64 Olympics, she won three gold medals sprinting. Pretty awesome. Okay. Um, you, you've heard me talk a lot about Michael Jordan. I love Michael Jordan. Okay. If you want to talk about someone, a mother who prepared the child for the path instead of the path for the child, Talk to Michael Jordan's mom, you know, when she said, go discipline yourself. And we know the rest of the story. The championships, the MVPs, so on and so forth. Michael Jordan uh, got cut 
his sophomore year. So again, he was a natural in this field, right? Tom Brady was the 199th overall pick. He was the sixth quarterback drafted that year. And look what's happened in his career. Okay. Abraham Lincoln. And here's something interesting. If you've never done much research about Abraham Lincoln, it is fascinating. The guy was absolutely incredible. He overcame some amazing odds. Okay. So when you uh, look at his political career, we know him as one of the greatest presidents, but he was a very much a failed politician. He learned, uh, if you get into the history, he wrote a lot of letters to a lot of people threatening a lot of things. And uh, he learned over time how to, how to make changes. Pretty remarkable individual to be able to learn, to grow, to change behavior. Okay, Alan Iverson. Um, if you have not seen this clip, you will quite enjoy it. It's easy to sum it up. We just talk about practice. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Not a game. Not, a, not, not the game that I go out there and die for and play every game like it's my last. Not the game. We talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? And we're talking about practice. I know I'm supposed to be there. I know I'm supposed to lead by example. I know that. And I'm not, I'm not shoving it aside, you know, like it don't mean anything. I know it's important. I do. I honestly do. But we're talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> we're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We ain't talking about the game. We're talking about practice, man. When you come in the arena and you see me play, you see me play, don't you? You see me give everything I got, right? But we're talking about practice right now. We're talking about practice. Man, I look, I hear you. I, it's funny to me, too. I mean, it's strange, it's strange to me, too. But we're talking about practice, man. We're not even talking about the game, the actual game, when it matters. We're talking about practice. Possible though that from where he's coming from, if you practice, not you would be better, but your teammates would be better. How the hell can I make my teammates better by practicing? Okay. <laughs> he, you know, obviously he missed his practice. <laughs> and you know, then this this is a classic example of a fixed mindset. A guy who believed that he is what he is. He's a franchise player. And we're talking about practice, right? And it's hilarious because here's a guy, again, a great, great basketball player, but what came of his career as a result of it? He wasn't in it for his teammates, he wasn't in it for anybody but himself, and he missed the most valuable time to learn and improve. Because he was there for game days, and that was about it. And teams are not made during tournaments. Teams do not develop during tournaments. Teams develop during practice. They learn their skills during practice. You know, so when you look at, at something like that, you know, an, an icon of, of sports, that's just not the right attitude, not the right mindset. And he knew, I'm supposed to lead by example. I mean, I don't know what else to say about that other than that is not the way we do things. And that's not what we reinforce. Hey, it's okay to miss practice because it's just practice. Practice is everything. And that is truly where we bond, where we get better, where we develop, where we learn, and where we have the opportunity to work hard. <laughs> okay, now let, let's look at it from the athlete side. When we start with a fixed mindset, self-talk, here's, here's what they start saying. Coach will never play me, okay? Here's, wh here's where you know that a girl, your daughter may have a little bit of a fixed mindset. I'm always messing that up. Why can't I stop doing that? I can't do this anymore. That is not my style. These are, these are phrases that girls are saying. So if they get home and they say, I can't do something. Coach is gonna play me. I'm no good. 
so on and so forth, what is their belief system? They're functioning from a fixed mindset. And what we want to hear is a growth mindset talk, okay? I'll look for a chance to show what I can do. I'm going to prove to the coach that I'm willing to learn and work hard and I can change, right? And, and so when we talk about parents fighting battles for their children about playtime and, and other things, let them work at that. Let them earn that because that's what needs to happen. Because if you're going to the coach before the player goes to the coach, again, we, we're on that, we're, we're trying to pave that path, okay? I need better strategy for this situation. So if they're, if they're allowing themselves to make mistakes and trying to fix those mistakes, that's great. That's what we want to help them understand. If I ask for some feedback, I can make a change. I need help or I need to make some better choices. This is going to take some practice to learn. So these are the things that we want to start hearing, that we want to start reinforcing and teaching at home. Because the I can't turn into I can't, you won't. You will not be able to, and that will be the pattern, right? But the I will learn, I can't, I will work, turn into that. You know, your mindset, you cannot outperform your mindset, let's just put it that way, okay? Moving on. As coaches, and this is as parents as well, you are never going to get this. If ever a coach says that, if ever one of our coaching staff says that, I'll tell you right now, we are wrong, and we will fix that, because we cannot function from, from that, okay? And yeah, exactly, and coming from, from other players as well. This, this cannot happen. You know, as teammates, we need to reinforce and help and teach and support, okay? She's so athletic. She was born to play volleyball. Who's, who said that? I mean, be honest. You know, who, who, who said that about their child? My daughter is just naturally athletic and good. Or talking about somebody else. That player is just naturally good. Oh my gosh. She's just good. You know, we can't compete with them because they're just good. Right? How many times have we said that? Okay? Why can't you stop doing that? Susie is good at this. You are not. You know? Little Jane down the street learned how to ride a bike at three and you're six and you still can't even, uh, you know, ride your training wheels. What's going on with you? You must be deficient. Something is wrong with you. You know, I even caught myself sometimes because my daughter and my son are two different creatures. My daughter started talking a whole lot earlier. And, you know, so I started asking myself, oh, no, what, you know, what's wrong with my son? He must not be as smart as my daughter, so on and so forth. You know, it's easy to fall into these traps. You know, myself, extremely included. Okay? These kids are terrible. I am so upset with what team I'm playing on because I see a name on a list and that girl's just not good. These kids are terrible. This season is going to be a waste. It's lost. We are throwing in the white flag. I'm going to call up Club Utah, Utah Aces. I'm going to call somebody up and I'm going to transfer because I'm going to get on a good team that's going to solidify who I am and validate me as a person and as a parent. So when I send out the Christmas cards, I can say, hey, I made the Wildcat first team. Right? Speaking from, yeah, I did make the team. I'm just going to let you know, okay? I'm just kidding. All right, so from the growth mindset, here's what we want to hear. It seems like this is a challenge for you. How can I help? You know, that's the right way to approach it. With hard work and dedication, she can be a great player. If there's something you want to change in your game, I'm always available. Okay? These kids need lots of reps and lots of feedback. You know, that, if we can start approaching it from that standpoint, you know, how can we help? How can we encourage them to learn? How can we encourage them to work hard? It's going to make a big difference. Because again, we cannot believe that where they are today is where they will be tomorrow. If that's the case, franchise players are born and not developed, and I cannot believe that, and neither should you. All right, mindsets in action. Okay, fixed mindset, I, talking about IQ, intelligence is static, growth mindset, intelligence can be developed. Okay, and, and that, that, that's a great, great question is, you know, when do you feel smart? When you succeed and do well on a test or when you are learning? And, and that, that's a great question because again, it'll, it'll put you 
in that position to ask yourself, okay, if, if I take a test, am I gonna take those tests that make me feel smart, or am I gonna put myself in a situation where I'm learning, and the learning is what I value? And that's what we need to, to value, okay? All right, talking about abilities. You are born with talent, you either have it or you don't. Growth mindset, talent is developed through hard work, passion, and coaching. I'm telling you right now, we have the best coaching staff anywhere around. Okay, a couple Fridays ago, if you are on Facebook, you saw the post that Matt made, and they were here, they were learning. They were trying to get better. They were developing as coaches so that they can help your daughters develop as players. And that's, that's what we're bringing around, is that coaching, that passion to help. And so they're, getting, they're hearing the same exact thing that you are. And we're getting more in depth in teaching them how to be better. And understanding that they're looking at, at your daughters not as where they are, but what they can develop and become. And again, you're good, they're gonna get some, some frustration, especially a fixed mindset player, a fixed mindset parent is gonna be a little frustrated because they're gonna look at this and think, oh my gosh, it is what it is and we can't change it. Well, we're here to tell you, we are going to change it. We are gonna help them improve. That is our goal. And again, the support needs to be from you. Uh, focus on looking good, avoiding responsibility, and the blame, okay? That wasn't my fault, that was the setter's fault. That was a horrible set, okay? That wasn't my fault that we lost that game. Um, yeah, I missed my serve, but it wasn't my fault. I only missed one serve. Jane missed two serves. It's her fault. Okay? It, it, you know, I'm just here. At least I hit well today. We lost, but at least I hit well. I mean, that's a question sometimes we'll ask. Would you rather be on a state championship team or an all-state player? And that's, that's a great question. You know, is it wrong to receive accolades? Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's a sometimes... It, it's, it feels good to feel like you are rewarded for hard work, so on and so forth. But truly, when you ask that question, what would you rather be, on a championship team or an all-state player? You know, do you, do you prefer the accolades or do you want, you know, the, the team? And, you know, it's interesting when you ask that question. I encourage you to go home and ask that. What would you prefer? And you'll see kind of where your daughter's function is from, okay? Um, growth mindset, self-development, self-motivation, responsibility. I am telling you right now, the best thing that you can do is help your children to take responsibility for their actions. I heard a story today from a parent working out in my gym. Um, I, I'm teaching them a, a, her son a lesson. He was outside throwing snowballs at cars, right? Just hucking them down, hits a car, guy gets over there, gets, goes ballistic, goes absolutely crazy. And instead of you know, mom, you know, getting in front and saying, yeah, you know, that's not my son, you know, she brought him out there and, you know, made him take, uh, take some responsibility for his actions and he learned a lesson and, you know, he's three days straight from throwing snowballs, okay, <laughs> pretty awesome, good recovery, okay, a fixed mindset is motivated to highlight proficiencies, high deficiencies, right, they put themselves in a situation to feel good, to succeed, and they avoid anything that would take them out of that, okay? Whereas a growth mindset will learn, they learn from mistakes, and they bounce back from losses. Losses are not bad. We learn more from a loss than we ever will from a win. And sometimes winning just feels great, but sometimes losing is an important process to move to the next thing. You know, hopefully, we say we don't want to lose the last game, obviously, that sort of thing. But, you know, losses are not necessarily a bad thing. As long as we take from it what we need to take from it. And sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. And that's especially with our coaching staff. Okay, well, before we uh, get into mindsets and action, we're going to talk about the... talk about the, the test, okay? And... Uh, now I just want you to look at it, okay? And so as we go through this, we're, we're going to go through it, you know, briefly. But you're going to start looking at it. You know, where are we at? Where are we functioning from? And we get to the first question. I was born with a certain amount of intelligence, and I can't really do much to change it. You know, if, if we strongly agree, we're on the fixed mindset side. If we strongly disagree, we're on the growth mindset side. 
okay? Um, you know, I, number two, I can always substantially change my skill level as a coach. I strongly agree, we're growth. We strongly disagree, we're functioning from the fixed mindset. Number three, some people are just born with talent. They don't have to do much to accomplish great things. Fixed is strongly agree, strongly disagree is a growth, okay? No matter who I am, I can significantly change my intelligence level. You know, we're growth if we strongly agree, we are in a fixed mindset if we disagree. Number five, I have a certain amount of talent and I can't really do much to change it. You strongly disagree, you're a growth. You strongly agree, you're fixed. So, pardon me? I have a certain amount of talent and I can't really do much to change it. Fixed. And then, strongly disagree with you, growth. So if I said that wrong, I apologize. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, talent is developed through hard work and patience. If you strongly agree, it's growth. If you strongly disagree, that's fixed. The players who are the most skilled at volleyball at the start of the season will not necessarily be the most skilled at the end of the season. Growth is an agree. Uh, fixed is a disagree. Number eight, no matter how much intelligence I have, I can always change it quite a bit. Okay, strongly agree is growth. Disagree is fixed. When I make a mistake as a coach, it means that I am not a good coach. Strongly disagree is growth. Strongly agree is fixed. Number 10, I can learn some new things, but I can't really change my coaching abilities. Okay? Um, if, if we uh, strongly disagree, we're growth. If we strongly agree, we're fixed, right? So just take a look at that and just kind of see where, where are you at? Where are we functioning from? And I'm just here to say that no matter where we're at, we can change. We can get better. If we're in a growth mindset, fantastic. Let's build upon that. If we're a little bit more in a fixed mindset, Let's learn how we can change, how we can develop a different mode of thinking. All right, mindsets in action. Um, <clears throat> so we look on the, the fixed side. Leads to a desire to look smart and a tendency to avoid challenges, even if future success is at risk, okay? Uh, growth mindset, embrace challenges, willing to get out of comfort zone. And as you hear our coaching, a lot of times what you're understanding, if you're, if you're on the court and you're hearing what we're saying, we are telling and we are instructing, this is what we are working on and whether or not you hit the ball in or out does not matter. What we care about is that you are trying, okay? That you're getting out of your comfort zone. If you're really good at hitting into the middle of the court, I wanna see you go for the angle. I wanna see you hit a line, get out of your comfort zone. Because if you can get out of your comfort zone, we're going to make positive changes. And the girls with that growth mindset, they will get out of that comfort zone. The girls with the fix, they are so scared to make mistakes and to look foolish that they will do everything at all costs to avoid it. Even going to the bathroom. Or I don't feel well, can I go sit out? You know, they'll take away their opportunity to succeed so that they don't look foolish, okay? And I see it all the time and we try to encourage them. You know, this is something that, that you need to do. Or all of a sudden you start hearing girls say, I don't want to go to practice. And you know, and, and oh, you don't like volleyball? And it has nothing to do with their like or dislike of volleyball. Generally, they're functioning from fear. Fear of looking silly or fear of making mistakes. And that's why they don't show up. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I've seen it time and time again. And as parents, that's the thing that we need to do. My daughter didn't want to go to ballet because she couldn't do one of the dance routines, and so she started saying, I hate ballet, I don't like ballet. And, and finally, as we got to the end of it, we realized it had nothing to do with ballet. She loved ballet. It had everything to do with that she did not want to look silly, because she didn't know how to do something. Okay? And that, that's something we can dive into and really try to, try to understand. Okay, we'll get to obstacles. We give up when something looks or feels difficult. We persist in the face of setbacks. Okay, it's amazing to see the players who work hard all season long to what they can become, right? Because I know a lot of great volleyball players who are in college who did not start off very good at all, okay? And that's one thing that is just fun to see. Effort, effort as fruitless or silent, a lack of talent. See effort as the path to mastery. So if a girl comes in and she says, I, you know, I, if I have to try hard, then must not be that good, you know, and that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to help these girls understand that you try your best at all occasions.
foundation. Sometimes your ability is your biggest disability. Because if you feel like you're good at something, you don't have to work hard at something. Hey, I'm already fast. I'm faster than everybody else here, so I don't really have to run hard, you know, to develop my speed or so on and so forth. It, it disables them because if they have to continue to work hard, sometimes they feel like it shows that they're not as talented as they want to be or to think they are. Okay, criticism. Ignore useful negative feedback. Crave positive feedback. Learn from criticism. Feedback is a gift. Um, you know, this, this is an interesting, interesting thing because criticism is viewed so negatively. And we don't criticize. We can't criticize. Because if we criticize, you know, it's just a bad parenting technique. It's a bad coaching technique. And what we're, what we're trying to understand is that we're trying to give feedback. And feedback can be given in a positive or negative way, obviously. And what we want to do is create positive feedback. So when we're giving instruction and feedback, that the girls are listening to that feedback. They're understanding that feedback and trying to make changes based on that feedback. Now, how many times do we have to repeat ourselves as parents to get them to do something? You know, a lot. And so why is that feedback not being received? Okay? Um, success of others. They feel threatened by the success of others. Find lessons and inspiration in the success of others, okay? And that is always the, the key. What happens when you play in a team with a perceived superstar and it is not your daughter? How does she respond to that? You know, and this is the funniest thing. I remember in my high school, uh, we were quite good. You know, growing up in Chicago, men's volleyball, boys volleyball was a big sport. And after every single game, we were ranked second in state most of the year, big deal. We were the first team in the history of my school to be ranked that high first team to ever go to state, so on and so forth. And uh, after every match, it was standing around. Who gets to talk to the guy in the newspaper? Who's gonna have his picture on the newspaper the next day? Whose feelings are gonna get hurt? Well, you know, why do they think so-and-so is better than me? And it was interesting because it started tearing our team apart a little bit. And our coach did a wonderful thing. She started banning us from ever looking at the newspaper. And then for those who did, Talk to the, you know, to the newspaper people. She instructed us, only talk about your teammates. You know, do not mention yourself. Do not talk about what you're doing. Do not be an individual. Be about your team. And as we started changing that, it, it made a big difference. And because as we were trying to help everyone understand that, yeah, we won not because of us. We won because of my, the other five guys and the other ten guys or whoever else was, was a part of this process of practice. And that's where we always started. We said, we worked hard in practice this week, it was great. As a result, my teammates, you know, helped me out and I was able to have a good game tonight. You know, things of that nature. How is your daughter reacting to the success of others, okay? All right, here we go, I love this. The brain is like a muscle, okay? So the fixed mindset leads to a desire to look smart and a tendency to um, but outside forces limit the growth, okay? And so if we're limiting those, if we're letting outside forces, if we're letting something else stop us from learning, it, it stinks. That's, that's not the way it needs to be. We, we cannot let outside forces stop us from what we want to do. I'll tell you what, if Matt and I had let outside forces stop us, we would not be standing here today. Um, we, <laughs> we, heard, we heard a lot of no's, and, but we did not let that dictate what we were going to do and become because we believed in this. And as a result, we're here today. And thank you, because you're a part of why we are here today. And as a result of, of, of just getting over it, getting over the humiliation of hearing no, it, it turned into something that I feel is pretty special, at least it's special to me, okay? Um, with hard work and coaching, growth is limitless. Okay, responsibility. Takes credit for successes, seeks reasons outside of self for failures. You know, the blame game again. You know, on the growth side, we seek learning from losses, accepts responsibility for losses, take responsibility. Okay, all this confirms a deterministic view of the world. All this gives them a greater sense of free will. Okay, as a result, they may plateau early and achieve less than their potential. As a result, they reach ever higher levels of achievement. You know, so when you look at those four poster people of 
the naturals in their field. Each one of them overcame and did not let outside forces dictate who they were going to become and look what they became. Absolutely incredible. And I'm here to tell you that each and every girl here that's in our volleyball club, we truly believe that they can do remarkable things in their lives on and off the volleyball court. You know, if they can become good volleyball players, we want them to become that much better people. And I know that, that probably sounds like a cliche, but it's absolutely 100% true. And that's really, again, what starts at home, is how are we teaching them? Are we the force that's limiting what they can do? Are we the force that's encouraging them to step out of their comfort zone and go beyond what they thought was their potential? And remember, they cannot outperform their mindset. Okay. So, here as coaches is what we are trying to learn to get out of habits. Nice swing. You'll hear that a lot. Nice swing. And the girls think, great, nice swing. What we need to be saying is, way to get your feet to that set. Way to get your arm back. You know, giving direct feedback as to why it was a nice swing. Getting away from the kill and getting into the process, okay? Why didn't you block that ball? And then, why did you block what you did? So you didn't get up, so then asking them, so why did you do what you did? Was there something that, that came from that? You know, the biggest thing, if your daughter's a setter, I'll tell you what, here's something to learn right now in the college recruiting process. I was on the phone with the college coach the other day. He said, I just want a recruit girl that can answer the question why she said where she did with confidence. He says, I have so many setters that are phenomenal setters. Why did you set that ball? And they look at me and say, I don't. They're afraid of disappointing the coach. They know why they set that ball, but they're afraid to say it. You know, and, and so that's the thing, is if we can ask the questions and have them answer. I went this way because I saw the setter go this way, and I thought the ball was going outside. They set back, I'm sorry, I really, I really read it as an outside set. You know what a coach is gonna say? Awesome, you know? Here's, maybe we can adjust this and what you're seeing, and so on and so forth, but if you have a reason, it's great. Why did you write with crayon on the wall? I wanted to draw you a pretty picture, Dad. Awesome, thank you. Let's just do it on a piece of paper next time, right? You know, and the tendency is to get irate. Okay, we are gonna beat this team. Okay, this is a good team. We have to work hard and stay focused. Um, you are the best. Way to work harder when you are down. So these are the things that we wanna, yes, we wanna instill confidence. We wanna instill that Things are going to be positive, things are going to be great, but not at the expense of others. You know, and unfortunately there are times where we sit down and we try to use others to build ourselves up, and, or we sit down and say, oh, you know what, you're better than that girl, or that team, yeah, you're better than them. And, and, and again, we're focusing on the wrong things. What we want to focus on is what will help us beat this team. That's our goal. Our goal is to walk in and beat this team. We're not just going to say we're better than them. We're going to walk in and say, you know, we're gonna block. We're gonna shut down their outsides. We're gonna make sure our passing is in check. We're gonna make sure we get our feet to the ball. We're gonna run a faster offense using our middle, so on and so forth. You know, we need to have more of a game plan strategy as opposed to just generalized statements of better than. And yeah, exactly, great point Matt said is that as parents, we go in there, <laughs> you know, same thing. Oh, you guys are just gonna be this team. They're no good. You know, again, we're starting to look at what's going on across the net and to try to make ourselves feel better and make our daughters look better by putting down the other team. And we just don't want that. We want to be the best fans, the best players, and, and have the most sportsmanship and, and not at the expense of somebody else. We want to do that. We want to talk with our play and we want to work hard. And you know what? At the end of the day, if we say we learned something, we tried our hardest, and we did the best that we could on the execution side, it's a good day. And it may not always turn out the way that we want it to. So as parents, again, same thing, we need to have those behaviors. Wow, you guys walk so well. No, you guys are so better than that team, you kill them. Does that make sense? So these are the types of behaviors that, that we ask that you would encourage. Um, it, here's, a, here's a big one, and you know, and I've caught myself in this pattern of person a few times. Not necessarily 
going after one player, you know, but not per se say you cost us the match, but picking out instances, you know, at times, you know, where you get very passionate. And, you know, I've been in a few out-of-state tournaments where passion took over reason. You know, and not for the not for the positive per se. There's a quote up on the wall I'm not proud of um, from last year. You know, because even I, I've had my I've had my fair share. Um, <laughs> but what we want to see is is that at the end of the game, we want our girls going after it. everything that we've taught them instilled. If we say you were aggressive, you went up and did exactly what I taught you to do, and you just missed it, that's okay. We had a, a circumstance like that. We were in Denver. We were in the quarterfinals. Um, we were, you know, having a great match against this team from Oregon, and uh, my setter set a back one to one of my middles who was having a great match. She missed the ball literally by two inches. I think we lost 17, 15, or 18, 16. Heartbreaking. We had a clear path to the finals. We thought playing a team that we'd beaten all year in the finals, and we missed it by this much. And it should have been so easy to get on that girl. But you know what? She went for the swing. The setter set the ball she should have set, and it just didn't work. And two inches made a big difference. But she did what she was supposed to. And at the end of the day, I was OK with that. Because you know, we never, ever get on the girls for trying hard and be making the right play with failed execution, because failed execution will happen, right? Okay. And then again, going back again, she's a natural, she has so much talent. If she keeps working hard, she will improve. And even the girls who are extremely good, here's what's interesting is we have position training and a lot of the players who are the elite style players continually come week in and week out. You know, supposedly, you know, the best players, so on and so forth. You know, girls with already who have scholarships, that they're here, they're training, because they still believe they can get better. And that's awesome. I like that. That's what I love about some of our, our girls that have been around for a while. They want to keep improving, and they don't believe that they can, that they're, they can keep where they're at. And so they show up to the extras. And that's awesome. And that's part of the reason why they got there in the first place, is because they believe that the extras will make a difference. Okay, so talking about values, we have to value the process. We have to avoid focusing on outcomes. Like we talked about, process wins out over outcome any day of the week. Your approach was good, your arm swing was great, you hit the ball out, the process was good, the outcome will improve. But we're focused on process. And if we focus on outcomes, what starts happening, our girls start doing things out of character just to avoid a negative outcome. And typically, it becomes negative anyway. So we're trying to encourage the process of go for it. Take a risk. Because again, it will become better. But if we're only focused on the outcome, like, oh geez. You know, and you're gonna see this year, you know, there'll be moments um, where we're gonna tell a girl in, in probably an inopportune moment to go for a jump serve, and she's probably gonna miss it. It's the process that we value, not the outcome. It may or may not work out, and if it doesn't, at least she went for it. That's what we care about. At the end of the day, you look at it and say, I can't believe you went for that jump serve on game point. <laughs> you totally missed it, but that was awesome. <laughs> you know, that's okay. And we, as coaches, have to do it with a smile. That's very difficult for us sometimes, but we're going to do it. Okay, learning, taking risks like we just talked about. Um, we've got to value that. They've got to go for it. Even if it doesn't work out, if they're taking those risks, in the, it's going to get better because those risks will eventually pay off, right? With Sometimes with big risks or big rewards, sometimes with big risks or big failures, but we need to learn to take some risk, and that's okay. And, and we have to avoid just, I just want to win game, you know? Because sometimes that's not, the, that's not the answer. All right, we value passion. We value improvement, okay? Um, we need to stop focusing on wins. You know, I, I can't even tell you, you know, and for a lot of my life, I felt like I had to win. I just have to win, I have to win, I have to win. Matt and I are very competitive. If you catch us sometimes here at an odd hour, we're playing short court one-on-one, -on -one, and it gets a little heated. You can't imagine how heated sometimes it gets. Sometimes we, uh, we have to have people referee on the short court because we get a little heated, you know? 
<laughs> and again, it, it, so it's really easy to focus on that wins. But ultimately, we want to bring passion and we want to bring improvement. Just for the record, I'm winning overall. <laughs> and nobody believes that. <laughs> All right, learning model, okay? So we start with education, we become aware, we make decisions. And then there's an outcome analysis, you know, was that the right decision, so on and so forth. You know, and, and that's, that's the biggest thing, is it starts with the education, the learning, and as we become aware, it's easier to make decisions. And then we can evaluate, was that the right or wrong decision? And as we have those opportunities, it's easy to learn, it's easier to make wiser, better decisions in the future. I believe we've got four we will statements, okay? We value process, hard work, dedication, growth, and learning, not talent, genius, high vertical jump, etc. If we believed, or if I believed that only tall people could play volleyball, I'd been in big trouble early on, okay? I truly believe that my hard work and passion and dedication and learning you know, I believe that I had to work harder than any other guy out there in order to play the game of volleyball, and that's quite successful as a, as a result. Am I the best guy in the gym? Absolutely not. Do I believe I'm the best guy in the gym? Absolutely I do, you know, some days. But the, the point being is that we have to value the learning and the hard work and get away from just saying, you know, hype. I'm going to build a team around hype. You know, and, and that's just not, not what it has to be about. You know, we, we want to develop a team based on what they can become. We don't expect that you have arrived here fully formed. We expect you've arrived here ready to learn. So no matter where they're at, they're ready to get better. And no matter what level, U12, U18, college, Olympic, that's the attitude that we have to develop because you have the Olympians who go in and guys who are the, the, you know, the studs of, of college go into the pro world or go into the Olympic world and realize that they're not top dog anymore. There's somebody there that's a little bit better and they have to go in with that mindset that I'm gonna be here to learn. I'm gonna learn from the other guys and, and get over you know, believing that where I am is, is exactly where I need to be. We can always make improvements. A uh, perfect example, step on that. Bad example now because of what's going on, but good example from his, his sport career. You know, Tiger Woods at the pinnacle of his golfing career kept making swing changes because he felt like he could get better. And that guy was winning 50% of the tournaments he played, which is unheard of, but he kept making changes because he believed he could get better. We expect you to stretch beyond your comfort zone and take reasonable risks, okay? Uh, yeah, if you were around here today and you heard some of the coaching going on, we kept telling the girls, take some risks, get uncomfortable, be, you know, you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Kind of a funny statement, but that's what we want to teach them. Go for it. Because as you go for it, whether or not it works out today or tomorrow, it doesn't matter. You're going for it as long as it's a reasonable risk. You know, obviously there's some times where it may not be the, the best decision, and that goes back to the, you know, the learning model. Okay, we don't expect you to do the same thing you're already good at over and over. So that's, that's a big, big statement in practice. We're not just gonna, we're good at hitting, we're probably not gonna hit. I know you love hitting, but ladies, we're gonna do the things that we need to improve on. And we put them in situations to see where they are so we know what we need to improve on, and then we're gonna force them, not force them, sorry, it's always a choice. We're gonna put them in a situation where, they have, where they're gonna try to learn and improve and work hard at, at what they are not good at. Because that's the key to improving. Okay. We value process and we reward process. We reward taking on big but reasonable challenges. We reward pursuing them doggedly. We reward teamwork. And that's the big message we're going to send. Is that we value these things. As we see girls become being good teammates, we're going to reward them for that. We're going to say thank you for that. As we see girls work hard, we're going to thank them for their hard work. 
Um, and that's what needs to happen with you. You need to thank them and encourage them and be proud of them for their hard work, not their outcome. I'm so proud of you for winning that tournament. No, I'm so proud of how hard you guys worked to enable you to win that tournament. Because it was all the hard work and practice and all those extra trainings, they all paid off. And look what, look what, what happened as a result. Reinforce the process of what got them. Um, we're going to leave this open into just questions for a moment. Do you teach this to the girls too? They will be doing this the same exact training. We wanted to do the training with you first because we wanted you to be able to reinforce this. Because if we're teaching them something and we're passionate about teaching them something and the parents don't know what's going on, how can you reinforce it? So we wanted to do this with you. Um, so in two weeks, they will be doing this exact training on, uh, on Friday at 4 o'clock. So as you can see, it's extremely important for the girls to be here for that. So Fridays at 4, we're going to be really diving into a lot of areas of sports psychology, and especially starting off with mindset, because we feel like mindset is, starts with everything. And if we're all on the same page, I am telling you, the culture of this club and the culture of your home and what's going to happen as a result will be incredible because it won't just affect volleyball. It's going to affect every aspect of our lives, of their lives, of your lives. And if we can all be on the same page doing this, I promise you that great things will come as a result. And I've never believed in something so much as how this is going to affect the culture of our club and how it is going to affect our athletes and, and the good that will come of it. Any other questions? Matt will hand you the mic. So if we are afraid of, of looking silly with a microphone, we are a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset. That's right. So get out of your comfort zone. Right. Be like your daughters are going to be. If we don't have questions, I'm going to start singing karaoke. You <laughs> certainly don't want to hear that. Yes. In the back. See how hard I'm working, Reed? Growth mindset. I was just a little confused with number three that you just went through. It was those four things. The third one, I was a little confused by. Can you explain that one more? The third one. Hold on, I'm sorry. So you'll work on other... We'll work on other avenues of their game to get them out of their comfort zone and get them doing things that they don't necessarily like. And those are the times where stomach aches start happening a lot and girls may not want to get to practice or I've got so much homework, how am I going to catch up? I probably should go to practice. But then if you called and said, hey, we're going to hit you're like, oh, I just got my homework done. Wow, I can do it tomorrow. You know, a lot of that stuff happens. Thank you. Great, thank you for asking the question. What is your strategy to help girls that do have a fixed mindset? Um, we're we're going to reinforce the, the growth mindset um, and, and reward and reinforce the, the growth mindset. Uh, only talking about learning, only talking about hard work, and then pointing out sometimes in, in, a, in a positive feedback way when we're caught in that mindset. You know, ladies, this is a fixed mindset. You know, we're believing something, and here's where we want to believe. We call it woodenisms. Woodenisms. So John Wood was, you know, an amazing basketball coach, and the way he coached, the way he taught, and this is what we try to do a lot in our in our volleyball coaching as well. Is is he would say, here's the right way. This is the wrong way, or this is what you did. Here's the right way, and I think we're going to try to implement that with mindsets as well. Okay, here's what we want to think. Here's how we're thinking, and here's how we want to think. And just reinforce it. Ultimately, they have to make that choice. But if, we, if they're hearing it from all sides, because I believe mindset is a habit as much as it is a choice, and we need to get them to break that habit. And there's just a lot of, of great 
things that we can do. If they're hearing it from all sides, I, I believe that habit will break. Also, if you go to the education slide, you go quick as well. The, uh, the learning model. Right, that's, that's the learning model for helping to implement it as well, is making sure we educate the girls so they become aware of it. And then we, we reinforce it um, by how they make smart decisions and then we analyze it with them afterwards. Like, hey, you know, we're sitting in a, a really good pass with bad form. And so they're like, hey, great pass. We're like, oh, you know, what could you have done better by asking the right questions so they become aware of it, the answer the right way. And then also slowly be rewarded for the, the growth mindset. And then with that being said, they improved by 50%. Oh, what sort of suggestions do you have when they come home with real negative things about their practice? You know, saying, I played horribly. Or what, as a parent, how should we respond to that? My father calls it peeling the onion, getting to the, the core. Why was it a bad practice? You know, I just couldn't do anything. Well, what did you work on? You know, asking the questions, to get to the core issue, you know, what really went on to make it a good or a bad practice, and then identifying, okay? So, you weren't passing well. Were you following your passing keys? You know, you know what part of your passing broke down? You know, if you could have, if there was one key that you weren't doing, what was it? You know, putting it back on them so that they're learning and understanding. Well, I wasn't getting my feet to the ball. And then, okay, you weren't, as a result of not getting your feet to the ball, what happened? Well, I wasn't passing well. Okay, so do you think you need to, you know, and it's a little leading at times, but do you think you need to work harder at getting your feet to the ball? Yes. Oh, mom, you should understand anything about volleyball, right? But if you get to the point of feeling the onion, what's going to happen is, you know, they, they know the answer and they'll get there. But I really feel like if you can ask the right questions and get them to, to open up and, and diffuse the situation, it's going to help because they're going to have, and we want them to have those moments to where they are frustrated because frustration sometimes is good. You know, frustration and learning can't happen at the same time, unfortunately, but frustration can lead to learning if we guide it in the right way. Yeah, the one thing I want to point out as well is we want to make sure that we don't reinforce the fixed mindset. If they're frustrated, they're like, oh, you know, why are you frustrated? And they start peeling the onion, and all of a sudden they say, well, the setter was a setting me. And I was like, oh, you know what? We're going to talk to that setter or, you know, or the, the coach wasn't, you know, was making bad tosses or being really negative, you know, we don't reinforce those bad behaviors or, you know, that fixed mindset. We keep asking them the right questions and seek to understand them and be understood. Because a lot of times as parents and as coaches, the first thing we want to do is just, we want to rip open that onion. We just want to smash it open, like, all right, let's get to the core issue right now and just start problem solving. But everyone needs to be heard, understood, and validated. Once they're heard, understood, and validated, then they want to reveal the core issue, is what we realize as, as coaching and everything. All right, side question over here. So uh, I've noticed that um, sometimes the girls do push-ups. What does that tell them? They've done something wrong, or you know, how, what, what's the correction? What's the purpose uh, of the push-ups? Well, every time I make a girl run line, or every time I make a girl do push-ups, or yeah. things of that nature, I tell them it's an opportunity to get stronger, to get faster, to get better at volleyball. You know, so a lot of times, you know, they look at punishment as, oh, this is a negative thing. Um, but a lot of times if we have goals, we say, okay, we're trying to accomplish a goal and we don't do it, we have that, you know, consequence of helping them understand that, okay, we didn't accomplish our goal. As a result, you know, we're going to run, but, it, but the running is not because we're bad. It's because it's going to help us to get better. And you know, and I think there are, there are some positive consequences. If we're just doing pointless lines and pointless push-ups and pointless things, you know, then it sends a bad message. But if we have it with a purpose in mind, if we're setting a goal, um, it teaches. And I'll be honest with you, there's been moments where uh, girls need to know that we're serious. You know, that hey, we are going to run 10 lines if we don't accomplish this. And they don't do it, we're like, oh, you know what, it's okay. Yeah, you know, I don't have eyes, I was just kidding. And then also they started learning, oh, coach is a pushover. Yeah, all right, I know how to play this game. And so sometimes some of that is, is used to let them know that, you know, there, we are going to live up to our rules. We're gonna, we're gonna be value-based. So when we set a value, you know, our value for this drill is that we will run if we don't accomplish it. 
and they understand that we're going to follow through because follow through is extremely important with teenagers. I've realized, and if we don't follow through, we lose we lose some of that trust and we lose some of that ability to to help. And, and you know, like I said, and as long as it's, if you see a practice is spent the majority of the time doing push-ups, that is a good time to ask at the end. You know, I saw there's a lot of push-ups. Was there? You know, what, what was the what was the reason? You know, what were you guys working on today? And then, you know, hopefully the coach can come back and say, well, we were trying to accomplish this. Ultimately, that's not how we want to spend most of our practices, but a little bit of that, I think, is a good thing. Yeah, and just the other thing to mention on that, it, it's fun to create that competition and having that reward or um, fear of consequence to get them more and more to get tried harder sometimes. Use that as an option. Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm, really, I'm totally excited about this because I can see how it will help them in volleyball, but it will help them when they're in their work, in their jobs, it will help them with their friends at school, it will help them in relationships in life because if you realize the way you say stuff and how it can interpret and you can take any situation, and like Stephen Covey talks about, 10% I mean, is what you can't control and 90% you can't. So the fact that you realize you do have control over how you react and how you respond. Um, I don't know, I'm just all this and all. It's fun to be around somebody who's a positive person, who has a positive outlook, and nobody wants to be around somebody who's always negative all the time. So I, I'm just glad that they're going to get this from somebody else besides me. Because, <laughs> you know, like you said, mom, you don't, you don't know anything. Right? But it's good that somebody else that they respect and admire and, and will listen to is teaching the same stuff because it's not just going to help them with volleyball, it's going to help them in their whole life. Yeah, what's interesting is as, as we study this, I realized in my life I'm very growth-minded in some aspects and I'm very fixed-minded in other aspects of my life. And it was hilarious. I talked to my wife and she would let you know where I'm fixed and where I am probably in the growth mindset. And, but I, I recognized and realized, and as a result, I said, oh my gosh, I have a lot of behavior patterns I need to change. And as a result, it's, it's helped me make some positive changes in the areas where I feel like I had a fixed mindset and and a, and I do not think we can be perfect at this. Even you know Carol Dweck is is the author of, of the book Mindset. A lot of this comes from her her teachings and and what she, her studies and what she has found. And you know she even in her book comments that she catches herself getting back into old habits, getting back into fixed mindset. And I think as long as we're aware, we can catch ourselves and make appropriate changes because. We will not be perfect at this. It'll, you know, it takes some time, but with time and effort, good things come. But thank you. Any other questions or comments? Reid, would you touch base on what we're doing in November and December, taking the girls through all the different positions and teach what you're teaching? Uh, you, just the just the technical training that we're doing. Yeah, all the girls are running every position. Can you touch on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, our our philosophy over the next two months is that we believe that we want every single girl to have an opportunity to learn every technique. Just because somebody comes in as a middle blocker does not necessarily mean that they're only going to be pushed in as a middle blocker in their training. We want to make sure that every player understands all the skills, all the key points, because they never know what they're going to do later on. They may play on a team where they've got to be a right side. They may play on a team where they've got to be an outside. You, they may go to college and, and play middle blocker. And if they can learn all the skill sets, you know, that's very valuable. Because if you're a, a jack of, you know, all trades, you, you tend to have a lot of opportunity to be gainfully employed. If you're a jack of one trade, you better hope that uh, <laughs> what you're good at is if people are looking for it. And you know, and that's what we want to help these girls understand in volleyball, that you may do something that you've never done before, but it's a positive opportunity. We may find a, a girl at 16 who all of a sudden, and she, she sets, and she can set, and she never knew she had that skill set. So that's what the philosophy is over the next couple months, is helping these girls understand all the key points and how to perform all the skills, so that if there's a, a situation where something happens, they have to get out of their comfort zone, it's a little bit more comfortable. Any other questions or hands, comments? Okay. 
Okay. Well, hey, we just want to thank you. I, I, we really appreciate you coming and taking your time being here tonight. And this will be posted on YouTube, hopefully, if the filming is good. And those who were not here will be able to get that. And those who were here, if you felt like there was something that you enjoyed or that you want to get from it, you know, you may want to watch it again. If you say, man, I just can't listen to that guy talk, send me an email. It's all right.